modern Class D amplifier chips are very popular nowadays simply because they deliver a lot of power despite their size. And majority of them uses full bridge output using 4 MOSFETs for each channel, the reason why they are so powerful aside from being efficient. On the other hand, the IRS2092 chip can only do half bridge setup which we can easily determine because it uses ground connection to the speaker. So that means we can increase its output power up to 3 times by bridging them. But before that, I want to clarify the oscillation issue from the previous video. So I set it up with my thermometer probing this snubber resistor and powering it up the resistor is heating up so much without an input audio and looking at its output the amp is oscillating at around 44 kilohertz you will not hear this at all because it is above the audio spectrum and the quick fix is to connect a 1k resistor on its input it will lose gain, so a preamp will be needed here. And here's the connection. Now looking at the output, the oscillation was gone and the resistor is not heating up. Now let's proceed to the bridging setup. Take note that you can also bridge class AB amplifiers, basically any amplifier that uses ground connection to the speaker. Now this speaker connection will now ignore the ground, instead using each output of two amplifiers. The speaker connection will look like this. Now playing music, it is acting up as a differential amplifier instead. And if I set my signal to mono, there's no output because my signal are in phase. You see, I'm feeding signal here and each amplifier is outputting audio. Here's the other channel having the same output. But if I measure the two outputs, I'm getting nothing. So to bridge an amplifier, we need to invert the other half channel signal, specifically 180 degrees out of phase. And we can do that by using any popular dual op-amp ICs. And here's a very simple schematic diagram. It only needs mono signal and you can combine stereo signals like this. You can also add a coupling capacitor on its input and outputs. I didn't add capacitor to mine because all music sources and amplifier inputs have coupling capacitors anyway. Just make sure all grounds here are connected. So I made my circuit off camera and here it is. My advice is to place your components close to avoid humming. Now this Arduino circuit is for the clock synchronization and will be a view meter driving pixel LEDs at the same time. I chose 350 kHz for the clock so I need to set the self oscillation frequency of the amplifier 20% higher than 350 kHz which is about 420 kHz. And here's the connection from the clock, this is the ground and this is where to inject the clock signal and here's the schematic for that now i will have the same test as before each amplifier is outputting same voltage level here and if i probe the two outputs i'm getting twice the voltage so that means the bridge circuit is working. Now let's play some music.
here's another test for you to clearly see the difference. And again, 3.8 volts RMS per amplifier. And the bridge output doubles it. Unfortunately, I can't have a power test yet because of my power supply. You see, one board already draws a lot of power, so that means the bridge mode will draw up to 3 times more power. So linear power supplies will be very bad for this setup. We need a very stable voltage since these modules are sensitive to voltage drops. Switch mode power supply is needed to maximize this bridge setup. And if you're going to use linear power supply like this, it is not recommended to bridge it. I will give you guys an update once I have a switch mode power supply and might do a power test comparison between half bridge and full bridge. Linear power supplies can be used with bridge class AB amps since they have wide working voltage. But switch mode is badly needed for these IRS 2092 amps. So again, I hope this video gives you another idea. Feel free to ask questions in the comments below. Give this video a like and we'll do something else for the next one.